starting the process of restoring this laser cutter, which as you can see has gone through a bit of a fire. Uh, so the first step is going to be to see if the gantry is still any good. So as you can see, whatever was on fire uh, was burning around here. And there's uh, quite a bit of soot still, but a lot of it has been cleaned off already. Um, this used to be the air assist, clearly needs to be replaced. Even if the rest of the bearings are good, the belts probably need to go too. Um, so probably the easiest thing will be to remove a whole bunch of the paneling, including this top cover so that everything's more accessible. And then we'll come back. So I've never seen one of these mirror assemblies up close before, but I think it's pretty cool. So there's two screws here that go through free-fitting holes on this frame plate and then are threaded into this plate here, which actually holds the mirror. And so these springs are trying to push these two plates together. Then there's these three thumb screws here that you can adjust independently that push them apart. And uh, let you adjust the angle of the plane. Um, and finally, it looks like there's a threaded retaining ring here that holds the actual mirror in. So next I'm going to replace the timing belts. This is the one that came off the y-axis that moved the nozzle back and forth. So this one was closest to the fire. So you can see it's Pretty, pretty crusty, and also this clip is kind of rusted. So the way it attaches is uh, one end of the belt is clamped between these two plates, and then the other one is attached via this clip. Uh, so because it's steel, I'm hoping we can just salvage it and switch it to the new belts. Okay, uh, here's a close-up of how to install one of these belts. So first I'm going to take that keyhole feature and hook it into the screw here. And then I'm going to route this belt around the drive shaft in the back and then try and feed it through the extrusion without twisting it. Double check, that's not twisted. Grab the idle, and uh, that just sits in the slots here and is held in by the tension of the belt. And then my belt here is a little bit long, so with this tensioning device here, I uh, got the tensioning screw here loosened back far enough so that uh, these screws are at the end of the adjustment slots. And with that in place, I can hold this belt in place and cut it just a little bit past where the clamping plate ends. And now, just with hand tension, that in. That should be enough to start with. Now I should be able to use this tensioning screw to pull it into the final tension. And 
and that feels pretty good. So we will call that good. Here is a close-up of the burned paint. <laughs> it's uh, pretty gross. So I'm going to grind it off on the inside uh, and the outside and then paint over it probably just with spray paint. So I've got part of the cover upside down here. You can see that it, the fire was hot enough and it deformed enough that it actually broke this weld. So I'm going to try and tack that back together. Okay, so as you can see, I didn't actually strip the paint from the whole enclosure. So I got lazy. Um, so instead I just taped off a certain area. They do line up with one another, hopefully. Um, and yeah, let's see how it looks. really happy with how this came out, even though these edges don't totally align so well. Uh, I also hadn't noticed before how much darker the small part of the cover is compared to the big one, just because this one has so much more thermal mass, so the paint didn't, dis didn't discolor as much. Um, yeah, so next step will be to uh, put in the laser tube and some of the other 